Welcome, well, I say welcome back, welcome again to everyone overseas. I haven't had a chance to speak to you directly for a little while. And we've come to the end of Kohakon day one. Um, thank you so much to Joy. We just enjoyed your talk and um, yeah, lots of good listening going on in the room. Lots of good listening going on in the room all day, really. Uh, but we just wanted to wrap up the day, um, have a chance to say hi to you again. And perhaps just a bit of a summary for those who might only just be joining us or thinking about um, what talks they want to look back on from today and listen to the recordings. So just very briefly, I um, want to talk a little bit about the day and, and send out some thank yous. So this morning, uh, the conference began with um, two keynote speakers. So we had Tekahu Rolleston, who um, describes himself as a wordsmith and a jester. And um, he was followed by Anihira Morihu, who is the president of New Zealand's Library and, in, Library and Information Association, Lianza. And so we were very purposeful in putting Te Kahu and Anihira first today. If you um, are feeling sad that you didn't get to come to New Zealand in person um, and you'd like a a idea of um, what's important to us here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, um, please listen to those first two talks and you just have to close your eyes and imagine, well don't close your eyes, then you're not watching the talks, but close your eyes a little bit and imagine that you're here. Um, I really encourage you to watch those two first so you, you get a real sense of how we started um, and we're all so thrilled that that's how the day began today. So thank you again to Te Kahu and Anihira, thank you so much. Um, then we had some really nice morning tea. Um, Chris Cormack probably tweeted it because it's food. Um, for, there were scrummy scrolls there. So squishy and delicious. Um, sorry you missed those. Um, then the middle section of the day is kind of... Um, oh, there was a lot of admiration from me and from the room for the three speakers who filled our middle section of the day. And um, they all come from organisations that have done really stunning things. They've had amazing achievements with Koha. And so the first one was Lisette Shea, who um, her talk was 46 libraries, 15 groups, one consortium, so now what? And you're like, well, that's already awesome, so I'm really interested to hear what you're going to do. Um, and so um, Lisette gave some great tips, um, some jQuery um, tricks and tips and things so really encourage you to watch her talk and I bet there'll be a lot of pausing while you write down her clever tricks so I um, encourage you to hear Lizette, thank you again so much Lizette for your talk I know it's not the same when you can't hear and see us smiling at you but I promise you we were uh, second up we had um, William Tutier from Horofenua District Council and he is the um, Digital Library Coordinator there. And of course Horofenua is the very first Koha Library, the, the originators of the project. And so it was really awesome to hear and see William carrying on the legacy of Koha 21 years later and um, continuing to innovate and do cool things. So his talks From Zero to Hero, A Beginner's Guide to OPAC Survival. And I really recommend that one, especially if you've got any, um, any colleagues who are thinking about... Um, using Koha in the future, I think he, he made some really good points about what it's like to work with Koha and about how important it is to have your mistakes and ask for help and draw on the experience of your peers to, um, to make informed decisions and learn from um, all of those around you. So um, I was so impressed and I thought we might ask William to be the MC next time. He was incredibly well spoken. Um, next time, I don't know how far away that's going to be. Ten years... <laughs> This is 10 years since the first school hack-on that was held in New Zealand. Chris made up a rule that, um, Chris Cormack made up a rule that it has to be here every 10 years. So maybe we'll change the rule or us, we'll see you in 10 years. <laughs> uh, and then the third one, like if we weren't already kind of like, wow, those two first talks are amazing. The third one was Mingu Yakuzul from um, Devonham. He's the CEO there and he's based in Turkey. Um, Mingu just very casually it's like, oh yeah, we run the biggest Koha installation, 1,126 libraries, just off one installation. And you're like, mm, well, that's already amazing, and a lot of people already know that. 
So he didn't talk about that very much, which would have been actually quite exciting, but you can watch his 2019 Kohakon talk for that. And what he talked about was about his next project, which sounds even bigger, and I was um, particularly inspired to hear his thinking about how to look after libraries that are um, running perhaps without any trained librarians at all on staff. So um, I took a lot from that one, and I hope you do too. Then we move into the afternoon. Um, we had David Nind, who the um, international viewers who are involved in the um, the release team know David well from the community meetings and as a leader amongst the documentation team of Koha. And so he told us a bit about um, some of his ideas about documentation and where he'd like to see um, Koha documentation go in the future. So if you um, like some of those ideas, David will welcome you and so will the rest of the documentation team. And um, I sneakily got him to tell us a bit about how to participate. So if you watch that talk um, and get inspired, what we'd love to see is for um, anyone who finds any problems with documentation to, or things they think could we make better to um, either participate in the documentation team or um, even just let the documentation team know your thoughts. I'm sure they'd love to hear from you. In the last session before afternoon tea, because we stopped for food a lot here, um, was called What's Missing? Koha from a Marketing Perspective. And Jessica Zairo and Adam Brooks from Bywater Solutions um, had some ideas to put forward about how to form relationships with your partners and peers and colleagues and fellow vendors in the uh, library community, not just in the koha community, but the wider sector. And... Um, there were a few, just a few ideas there about what it, um, dispelling some of the myths about open source and um, how hard it might be or all those kinds of things that we um, hear people say about open source. They've got some um, great ways of explaining those myths away. So really encourage you to listen to that one if that's something you've come across too. So then after we ate some more food, we had a final talk of the day, which was joy back to where I started a few minutes ago, um, talking about creative problem solving. And I think um, I really enjoyed the way she talked us through how we um, have our strengths as um, project team members. And if we, if we find something is not the thing that we most enjoy or are drawn to, the solution can just be to find people who are the best at those things, bring them into your team, and let yourself be good at the things you're good at, and let your colleagues and your, um, you know, your business partners be the people who bring the skills that you don't have. So, I think we can all um, take a little comfort from that idea that you don't have to be good at everything. Um, just to acknowledge what your strengths are, and and build a really great team around you. So yeah, day one was pretty full when you put it like that. Um, so. Again, for everyone listening, um, we tried to keep to time later in the day. Sorry about this morning when you, if you uh, were watching your clock to get to a certain presentation and found out we were already scoffing our lunch down. That's a bit of a colloquial term here for eating a lot quite fast. Um, so apologies for that, but I'm sure you'll pick up the talks in the live in the recordings. Uh, that'll come out on YouTube. And um, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. So, tomorrow is, um, we're starting at 9am, and that's NZDT, that's plus 13 hours on GMT or UTC. So, for everyone overseas, um, we will look forward to also hearing your, um, your responses as you, watch, as you watch some sessions overnight, and we can um, pick up what you've got to say in the morning and, and vice versa then. You can go to sleep and we can answer your questions and then you can wake up. It's actually kind of how it goes in the koha community. We um, can solve things really fast because, well, New Zealand might get to the problem first because the sun comes up first in Gisborne and then we go to bed and then someone else carries on and does the QA and um, then someone else might get up somewhere else in the world and push that to master if it's an urgent problem. So we've solved some problems pretty fast that way. So instead of solving problems the next few days, we can just chat and enjoy. So good night, Kakiti no, see you tomorrow. Um I'll just leave you with the sponsors slide. Thank you so much, sponsors, for making today free, helping us keep down the barriers to, to participation in the Koha project um, going forward. See you later.
see you tomorrow.